Taste Atlas just ranked all the top food dishes one to a hundred in the entire world, and it's going viral. So let's talk about Brazil, it. number one, go uh, and Pricana, which is a salty cut of Brazilian steak, went number one. And a lot of people think this list is pretty controversial. People want to know who voted, what was their scientific process, because how come my favorite dish didn't make the list? But actually, David, we're gonna use our vast food knowledge and open mind because I've actually eaten a lot of these dishes and we're going to give you our analysis on what we agree with disagree with what do you guys disagree with and which ones were left off the list let's get into so it so make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications by the way all of these top 100 foods especially the top 50 can be improved by smala which is available with free shipping on amazon.com right now also you? at smalasauce.com guys amazon.com smalasauce.com get it now anyway uh, real quick andrew let's just rattle off some of the top 10 just to get people's minds worrying. Andrew, number one was Prakanha. Number two, Roti Kanai hey. from Malaysia. Andrew, Pad Caprao came in at number three. Pizza Napotiliatana from Italy. Guotier, which is basically just dumplings, pan fried dumplings. Cow soy, butter garlic naan, tang bao, aka shalong bao, shashlik, which is like a roast meat, Uzbek, Russian. And then it went back to Thai again with Penang curry. Mm, did they mean Penang curry? I don't know. Well, then you got parpadel, you got uh, the Portuguese clams and the amejos de pola pato. The pan bun mi. Bun, bun mi. Hey, bun mi is up there. Okay, so we're going to talk about it, guys. Uh, Look at this top 50. We're going to talk about the top 50 list right here. Uh, the ranking, what we disagree, what we think about it. David, what's interesting about this, though, is that of this top 50, I only counted five dishes that I have not tried before. I've eaten 90 Five percent of this list. Yes, yes, yes. I would say that all these dishes, if you are an international foodie, if you're traveled around the globe, if you've lived in major metropolitan cities with large globalized multinational immigrant populations, these are popular dishes. Yeah, you can get all of these in New York City and LA, a decent version of it. No, literally 100% of these, yeah. you can get these in New York. So real quick, I want to highlight the few dishes that... Uh, I have not tried that were ranked on this list, which is Vatapa, which is the Brazilian shrimp stew, tacos, which is the Greek bruschetta version. I've never had that. Zaytun parvade, which is a uh, marinated olive per from a Persian style, which doesn't sound that. I don't know if that should be on there. Chesneca, which is a Czech garlic soup. Did you have it? I, we had the Georgian version. Okay, we had the which Georgian version. Which is like, version. basically a lot of these countries in the region, you know, they may have a slight 25% different version. Okay, so we actually had it. And then the Siorba Ratentuna, which is a Romanian sour chicken soup, which I, I, sounds okay. I, I actually think we've had Vatapa before too. Possibly at a Brazilian spot. Possibly, yeah, yeah. possibly. Okay. Um, by the way, guys, just to show you the list of the top ranked foods in America by pure popularity, Andrew, it goes hamburgers, French fries, grilled cheese, fried chicken, cheeseburger, mashed potatoes. Yo, that <laughs> almost sounds like a, like even in 2024, I could see it though, like of just purely popularity. Mo that's most fast food. Right. When you go to Dinty Moore, Andrew, we're talking about bottom rate American frozen meals. They have all of those all the time. Hey, hey, hey Dinty Moore. I don't know if it's frozen, bro. It's in the can. Right, right, right. Anyways, uh, uh, by the way, by the way, guys, the list that we just showed, we popped up from Instagram, that's um, one through 50. So if you didn't see your favorite dish, it could have popped up 50 to 100. For example, this is a global taste atlas ranking, Andrew. Pho came in at 100. Wow. I think it should have been higher. But anyways, let's talk about this uh, top 50 because I think that people are more concerned with the top. 50 dishes. Like, what are the top 50 dishes or what are the top 10? How did you rank them top 10? I think, obviously, a lot of people, I'm not going to lie, from Brazil probably voted on this. And a lot of people from Thailand voted yeah, on it. And I it. think a lot of people from Eastern Europe, actually, like Turkey yeah. and stuff, voted yeah. as well. Because Taste Atlas is actually more of a non-American brand. Right, right. Even right. though it's in English, you know, uh, English has become a global lingua franca. So, so are you saying that basically... This is going to be skewed because it's going to be based off the preferences and the exposure uh, volume from certain countries only. Right. So let's go first. I just want to talk about the, like, the top 10. And we got to analyze this because if we got to like analyze whether we agree if it should even be top 10. So Pakanha, which is a cut of beef. You've had it at maybe Fogo de Chao or any other Brazilian meat barbecue where it's like unlimited. All you can eat, they come over on the skewers right. and they'll cut it off and the shave. It's pretty good. But my opinion is that 
really just grilled beef, like steaks, grilled steaks could be number one. I think that is fair to say that a nice grilled steak, medium rare, might be one of the best dishes you can eat in the entire right, world. Right, cause you're saying if you're arguing over basically a few processed things or spicing, flavoring, seasoning yeah. things, it's not that different. No, you don't even need to season a steak that much really, you know what I mean? So it doesn't really matter how, if it's Brazilian style, if it's American steak, even if it's a straight, whatever, like it's coming from a grilled steak, we can all agree a nice cut is delicious. Right, in Turkey, Salt Bay, still exactly. grilled, a grilled steak, right? Exactly. It's exactly. almost more depending on the cut, really. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. I, I do think it cuts core to like our caveman desires, yeah. especially men. Men yeah. really, really love Dude, steak. Dude, but I mean, you know, you know how many people would put steak as like their last meal? I think a lot of people would. So right. I, th I think it deserves to be up there. It is but true that interestingly enough, Andrew, in Asia, until we got exposure to the West, steak's were actually not as popular. No, I'm not going to lie. Asia was missing out on some steaks. And now Japan came through with the Wagyu the last 20 years. Kind of crazy. Right, 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 right. So you're just saying maybe just, let's just put Prakanha as like steak. seasoned steak in seasoned general. Seasoned steak, amazing, But I right? will say this though. I think Argentine and Brazilian steakhouses are heavily underrated. They might have the most underrated steaks in the world. Sure, sure. Let's go number two, Roti Kanai. I don't think this should be that high. This is an appetizer dish. It is good, but it's essentially curry and like a, you know, a, a big, not a bing of a type, but it's like a, a layered pastry. But, but it is true that roti canai, and let's look at the top 10, Andrew, butter, garlic, naan, even though these aren't dishes, they're more like accompaniment dishes. That's like liking the cheddar chape bay biscuits or something and saying that's the best dish from Red Lobster or whatever. It's like a... They are similar and both driven by some interfacing of different worlds, right? Oh, yeah. Like Roti Kanai, definitely influenced by the India sphere. India, of course. Uh, some of the Sinosphere, too, actually. Exactly. Yeah, it's both, you know, because it's you dip it in curry. But Roti Kanai, it should be up on the top 100. But number two, I really don't think so. I, right? I think Malaysians pumped it up, yeah. to be honest. So let's talk about Pad Krapau. Pad Krapau is really good Thai dish, but it's like it does not deserve number three. But Pad, pa but Pad Krapau, interestingly enough, Andrew, that is the favorite dish of the average Thai worker. Yeah. No, but I'm saying that they Thai workers they're the ones voting on Taste Atlas. Yeah. Americans don't use Taste Atlas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So, you know what? I'm just going to say from an American standpoint, when you go to a Thai restaurant, Pad Kar Pao is not even on every single Thai restaurant menu. No, but, but it is true if they serve Thai people, Pad Kar Pao is going to be on there. It should be on there, yes. Pad Kar Pao is good. It's but very simple. It's very simple. It's like a spiced chicken or pork over rice, right? No, that's true. In granules. Uh, point Andrew, number four, pizza napolitana. I agree with this pick. I agree that pizza should be top five. I think pizza is arguably top two. Here's my thing. Pizza is the most copied dish in the world, I think. That plus burgers, which is not on the top 50 list. But pizza, literally, and I've come to appreciate pizza a lot more the past few years, living in New York, having had a lot of it. But I'm not saying I want to eat pizza every day, but I'm saying everybody is down to eat pizza. But, but it point. didn't say New York pizza, Andrew. It said, you know, Neapolitan know, style pizza. I know, but Neapolitan pizza is actually, I would say- That's actually the original pizza. Yeah, and if fresh, it's the better pizza. It's fluffy, it's hot, it's very thin crust, uh, straight out the wood, you know, the, the oven, so- Right, you can't really eat it delivery though. Yeah, everybody's made a type of pizza. Every country has a pizza. You and, and you can technically put anything on a pizza yeah. too. Dude, actually pizza, shout out to pizza. Nah, dude, hey, man. pizza. Come on, the balance between the acid, the cheese, the fat, the 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 bread and the mired effect. It's like all, it, it is a, it's a, it's one of the perfect foods. I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'll Andrew, coming in at number four, the guatier, aka guatier. the pot sticker, aka the dumpling. Dude, I think the pot sticker because the guatier, aka the pot sticker or pan fried gyoza, whatever, it's, it's like, I think it's the best dumpling because I think everybody loves dumplings and you see that there's five other dumpling dishes that are on the top 50. I will say cultures. the American chicken and dumplings dish is terrible though. That's not- Because that's like not even- I don't a, even consider that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet. We're talking about things such as the pierogi, the vareniki, the manti, the kinkali, tongbao, shaolongbao, guotie, yeah. mandu, gyoza. No, these are all ranked <clears throat> in the top 50. There's five different types of dumplings in the top 50. And I think that just goes to show you how much people love dumplings. Is, is that sort of like a pizza, how there's a carb cheese meat, right, on a pizza, but essentially it's a carb and meat, and a dumpling is actually meat wrapped around in a carb. 
Yes, and usually steamed, but I think pan-fried guartier, ooh, because you get the sear on the bottom and then you get the dough and it's crispy and it's meaty and it's juicy. Man. You know, there's a theory that came from, uh, you know, Gautiers, they came from Northern China, brought around the world, Middle East and Eastern Europe by Genghis Khan and the Golden Horde though. Yeah, I think so. Montes, Kinkalis definitely come from- They all kind of taste similar. Um, I would say, you know what's interestingly enough too is empanada type things on there as well, you know? Because, you know, I, I don't know if you consider an empanada similar to a dumpling, but then you've also got Chapelet's Mongolian Hushor. Yeah, I mean, I would say they are similar to dumplings because they're an encasing, but usually empanadas are more baked. Or fried, right, right, deep right. fried, which is usually not how you eat a dumpling. Ch try out the Tibetan chapelets and the Mongolian huchor, though. Number six, Andrew, khao soy. Are you surprised to see this curry noodle that's Chinese Chiang Mai yeah. Thai mixed You know, this as high. you'll see, there's actually a lot of curry dishes also in the top 50. So that means curry is good. Khao soy is really good. Yeah, I think khao soy is one of the, the hottest Thai dishes of the past 10 years. So I think... I think it's pretty good. Chicken with two different types of noodles. One of them's fried. It's a uh, creamy curry noodle. If it's valid, Andrew, it's got to be dark meat chicken drumstick yes, in yes, the cow yes, soy. Yes. Uh, Pempek from Indonesia. Or no, butter garlic naan, sorry. All right, all right, butter garlic naan, even for people who don't like curry, they like butter garlic naan. Butter garlic naan is pretty good. But I think having just like a like a side dish carb is kind of weird. That's like saying fried rice should be on. Or, or what if they would have said butter chicken? Butter chicken's actually on this top fifty yeah. list, by the way. What if it was butter chicken with butter garlic naan? Because that that's combo is like it's really a ten out of ten. That's pretty good. No, no, it is that. That's like a ten out of ten. Tong bao, aka I believe they mean shaolong bao, like soup dumpling, basically. And yeah, soup dumplings are, I would say, David, the hottest dumpling of the past fifteen years in the world. There are so many people in New York City right now and a lot of countries in the world, Andrew, running an entire business selling guatias and shalom baos. Yeah. Literally. Um, what else we got on here? Moving on. Shashlik, which is actually a Uzbek slash, you know what I mean, part of the Russian Federation. Right. But uh, talking talk about the Asian side, uh, Pempek, this is an Indonesian dish. I really don't think this should be on here. Well, this, this was clearly voted up by Indonesia. No, no, listen. Indonesia, well, Indonesian food's delicious, by the way. Not Pempek, though. Just not like this. There's way better dishes than this. So I don't really understand how it made it. All right. Do you agree, Andrew, number 11, Parpadel? Yeah, I can see it. I was Real waiting. Italian foodies know Parpadel. You know how everybody in America is like more on like just bowling knees. Pa pasta should be up there. And then you have the Portuguese clams. We've had that. Uh, bun me. Dude, bun me's. Let me talk up bun me. I think bun me's are one of the best sandwiches in the world, man. I think... For the simplicity of it, I think it beats the Italian sandwiches. I think so. You yeah. know, that's obviously, I'm also Asian, but I'm just saying. But, but, but also less nitrites because it's less preserved meats too. So yeah, technically it might could be, be, health, health, could could be, be healthier. healthier for you, yeah. Um, Tom Ka, Tom Ka guy, you know, chicken. Um, Vatapa, you know, the dacos. Like you said, Andrew, from Peru, leche de tigre. I'm with it. That's the I'm milk ceviche. It. I'm with it, yeah. Delicious. And then, like, you know, I guess we could keep going, David, but I do want to talk about, first of all, you guys let us know what you think about the list. Well, real quick, real quick. I just got to get to these ones, Andrew. Carne asada tacos at 19. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, let's do, I, no, I like it. Number 21, uh, nigiri. Yes, all right. So, I want to talk about this. This is bluefin nigiri, uh, which is mango. Maguro. Manguro. Manguro uh, nigiri is like, the reason why sushi should actually even be higher, in my opinion, in actual actually, actuality, because everybody around the world loves sushi, and sushi is consistently, good sushi is consistently one of the most expensive dinners you can get in any city. Any city you go to in the world, if they have a good sushi spot, it's going to be pricey, and the, you will expect high quality, and that's On why- earth. Yeah. That's why I think- Nigiri, first of all, I think whether it's salmon nigiri or tuna nigiri, it should be pretty high up. Yeah, I would say steak, sushi, and lobster are pretty consistent. Those are a lot of people's last meal. Like, people used to ask me my last meal. I think it would be like an omakase, to be honest. Uh, like a really pricey one, though. Karage, <laughs> karage came in at 23, the Japanese fried chicken. That's actually slept on in America. Yeah, that's the first one. Uh, some, we got some Greek lamb chops slept on. Pernil from Puerto Rico. Shout out to Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Tonkatsu, Kinkali's. Kinkali's, mm. obviously, along with the Shalom Bao, Tong Bao. I mean, you know, from probably from the Another same. juicy dumpling. Chilaquiles, underrated. I'm surprised it was ranked that high. So, David, one thing I got to say, though, let's skip to 39, Hot Pot. I'm glad to see Hot Pot on this list, but it's a little bit of a cheat. 
Because hot pot is like, what are you putting in the hot pot? It right, could you be could anything. put like 3,000 things in a hot pot. Yeah, are we talking about Wagyu hot pot? Or are we just thinking like the base level hot pot? It's kind of like saying Korean barbecue. In this vein, if hot pot is 39, which I'm not mad that it is because I love hot pot, but then Korean barbecue should be up here too. It should be top 50. Yeah, I think the reason it's not because is actually because Korean food outside of America and Asia, like all not over, a, Korean food is popular all around Asia, obviously in Korea and America. It's actually hard to find. I was just in Canada. It's not that easy to find a ton of great Korean yeah, food. Yeah, no, I don't think uh, there's great Korean food everywhere in the world, to be honest. Not like very hard to find probably in South America, like even, you know, but like America and East Asia has really good Korean food. Right, right. Number 43 was Merk Makhani, Andrew. That's the original version of butter chicken before the uh, Scottish or Irish, mm. I, like changed it up, added a little bit more butter. Uh, Japanese curry was on here right. at 46. I'm actually surprised to see that. I'm not saying go-go curry is not internationally popular, but I'm a little surprised to see Japanese tonkatsu curry at 46. David, at 41, when they say siuyuk, which is, uh, I'm assuming, is it referring to the... It's not refer. It's referring just to the roast pork, right? Not not chashu. I think chashu right. people like it, but the red maybe doesn't make it as popular. I, I would argue that that whole like top five of the roast meats should probably be up here, though. Like I'm saying, like if you could cram them together in the same like like a a samping font, like a three treasure rice with the siu op, which is the roast duck, the roast pig, and the barbecue roast pork, that would be like, I don't know, that would be top ranking too. Like right, that's right. That's crazy. Like, do people love those meats? Right, right, right. Also, uh, at number 53, this is off the list, and we got to talk about what Miss, they had chirasi bowls. Isn't that a little bit of a cheat too? Because in a chirasi bowl or a kaisen don, you could have like 20 types of fish yeah. or shrimps and scallops in the bowl. Yeah, I, I agree. So David, let's talk about real quick, what are some foods that we think were left off of the top 50 uh, maybe they were in the top 100, but they weren't top 50, and they should be top 50. I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Where was cheeseburgers? Dude, cheeseburgers needed to be on there. Cheeseburgers should be on there, bro. <laughs> Burgers are hella good, man. I, I, they're good. You, they, come on, man. Everybody got, everybody got a burger in the world. Why isn't burgers top 50? Yo, 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 I got this breakdown for fast food, Andrew. Shake Shack for burgers, McDonald's or Five Guys for fries, and Jack in the Box for the milkshakes. I think a burger fry milkshake combo easily should have been in the top 50. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Look how globally popular it is. Exactly. No, I think French fries should have been top 50. Okay. Uh, I think the cheese boat from Georgia, the kachipuri, could have been top 50. Kind of similar to a pizza, though. Minus sure. the yeah, yeah, it's kind of like pizza. All right, Andrew, a lot of people were mad that Plov slash Pulau, a.k.a. the Middle Eastern version of fried rice with raisins in it and nuts in it, yeah. didn't make it. Yeah, it's like Delicious. a tossed rice. Yeah, it's like, the, it's like the Middle Eastern tossed rice with raisins. A good Pulau is pretty damn good. It, it, it could be on the list. I agree. Uh, pho coming in at 100 instead of top 50, I think, is a little... I think it's a little but, messed up. Pho should be top. Like we said, very few countries outside of America have ultra-large Vietnamese and Korean populations. Right. Like, not really. You know right. what I mean? I'm not saying other countries don't, but not really. No, essentially, you're right. The countries that I think love pho are Vietnam, America, Canada, Australia, and France. And I think they all those places have great pho, but I'm not sure if everywhere else in the world has great pho. Right, right, right. Uh, Calbee grilled short ribs from South Korea. Oh, man. Like I said, grilled beef, though. Grilled beef is honestly... I, I'm okay if someone ranks grilled beef number one. Yeah, yeah. For me, I love steamed bosam from South Korea, but I know that it's not really, like, that popular. Same with, like, Jim Dak or, like, right. Hwang Ji. Those are never going to be on a global top 500 list. David, either. let's talk about Filipinos. A lot of Filipinos were a little bit upset there was no filipino food in the top 50 what the hell they're sleeping on us we have lumpia shanghai we have a chicken adobo those are quite things that everybody likes i actually agree i thought chicken adobo should have been on there or lumpia shanghai i think filipinos have some dishes in top 100 but i think one of them should have ranked top 50 i think for indonesia should have been satay skewers okay. instead of pempek what, what about uh hainan chicken rice or, or, or chicken rice from Malaysia. I instead, think chicken rice is of, up there. Yeah, for me, if I was going to do my list, I would definitely, definitely do chicken rice. Yeah, like you said, could dim sum be on there? It's hard to say because dim sum is a collection of 20, 30 things. That doesn't make right, any sense, right. right? It'd have to be siu mai would have to be on there. Right. Let's go through some comments real quick. Uh, let's analyze it. Someone said, no, nothing French. 
They did have one. French did have one dish on there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that France is almost more famous for influencing a lot of modern, like, you know what I mean? Like, new American food is heavily French influenced. New, any sort of fusion food is. But, like, the old school French French dishes, like a beef bourguignon, it's, like, past its prime. Yeah, beef bourguignon could have been on here, but not top 50, maybe. I think, also, I think here's the thing about French food. Like you were saying, it's like... When you think of French food right now in 2024, you're like just thinking of French influence food and French techniques. Right. You're talking about the French techniques are the top tier, but like I can't really name a French dish that I need to eat right now. Like, okay, tata is pretty good, but like I don't really need to eat it. Tata, tata. Yeah, I'm talking about duck confit. Uh, about yeah, confit? duck confit. I don't need it. Uh, it's good though. Escargot. I don't need it. I don't like. It, it's crazy. It's almost like. It was the king for so long, and then it influenced everybody else's fusion modern cuisines, but it itself is not loved anymore. I will say this. French techniques often can make other foods a little better because their techniques on point, right. but just for some reason, they don't really have any trendy dishes. Somebody said pizza is overrated, and you're basically defending it nah, as not nah. overrated. I just don't think pizza is overrated, to be honest, because it's just everywhere in the world. And if it's everywhere in the world... Dude, I know people who are lactose intolerant and will just let their stomach be upset and just eat pizza anyways. Like they just can't, you have to, it's worth the diarrhea. Very, very few people hate pizza. Um, I would say this, uh, there was a lot of Indians that were mad and Brazilians that were mad because prakanha is such a simple dish. It's just a cut of seasoned, you know, from the cow. And then uh, a lot of Indians were saying, oh, how can garlic butter naan be our best dish? How come everybody from only likes butter chicken, chicken tiki masala, and garlic butter naan from our culture? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Those are the most globally popular Indian dishes. Uh, samosas would be up there too. But I, I think the weird thing about Brazilian having a dish, number one, is like not that many people eat Brazilian food. Like, not that many people on a daily basis, and there's not that many Brazilian restaurants to the point where you would be like, oh, everybody loves Brazilian food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody likes Brazilian soccer or Brazilian women. But then I'd also say that they have a gigantic population to boost up the numbers on Taste Atlas. Yeah, that's what I mean. So it's like, I, I'm not going to lie, Brazil, don't get mad. No, probably no Brazilian dish probably deserves to be number one, to be honest, just because, like, that's not a, like... Brazilian food is good, but it's not, like, considered the top one right, in right. the world. Uh, by the way, Andrew, Peking Duck was number 71. Oh. They had Masamon Curry from Thailand at 73. Um, Boston Maine Lobsters were 78. Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff. Hong Sha Ro was on there. Uh, Show You Ramen. Oh, actually, man, my, Peking Duck should have been top 50. Hell yeah, Peking Duck should have been. Yeah. Actually, man, I, dude, this I'll tell you this. What do you overall... What do you give this list? This list, by the way, we said it's not your list. Obviously, this is going to be hyper subjective based on what country you've been to, the quality of food you've been exposed to. This isn't Anthony Bourdain's list. Right, right, right. Uh, what, what did you give this? I gave this list, I gave it a 6 out of 10. Mm, okay. Or, because it's like, I can't say it's the worst list ever because I've had all these foods and I really enjoy them. But then I can't say it's a really great list either because it was like primarily driven by like three countries. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, food is so subjective, obviously, and I think a lot of people have national pride, so they'll vote for themselves. Um, not everybody's country or environment has everybody else's food. Like, America is a very, especially you're talking about LA and New York, Seattle, Boston, sort of like these bigger cities, at least like, you know, Houston maybe. Like, these are areas that have a lot of different types of food. You mean maybe more diverse than... Yeah anywhere else on earth oh yeah the bay area food is very diverse so i'm saying and, and i don't I, i'm not trying to be like an american superiority uh, superiority right here but i'm just saying because america has all these immigrants we do have a lot of good food from other people so if you ask an american who has actually tried to go out and explore other types of food we will have a reference for almost every type of food that's good you know, if we really go dig yeah, for it. Yeah, because we're, it's not like an ancient country where they've just been, like, stewing in their own culture yeah. forever. Especially, like, immigrant kids. I'm not going to lie. Like, I would say maybe middle America, white Americans, I wouldn't really trust their opinion on food, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but, but I'm saying it's, it's about how much you explored. So if you come to New York and you hit Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan, and you really delve into all these different, you got the Eastern Europeans, you got the Caribbean, you got all types of Asian, you yeah, have you got Central the whole Asian, you have Russian, you have... Oh, 
a black American. You have all these different American food because you still have a lot of British and French people out here. It's like, dude, the food is really good. Like we yeah. have a taste for all the different types. And of it's food. crazy because Cajun and Creole food in New Orleans is super good if you get a 10 out of 10 version of it. But a lot of people in America don't even eat Cajun or Creole oh food. Oh my gosh. The Asian boiling crab, the Asian Cajun shrimp boil should be you top mean the, via, the via Louisiana the via boil. The Louisiana shrimp boil should be top and 50 for sure. There's a lot of ancient fusions. You know, a lot of people were pointing out Peru. It's a mixture of Chinese, Japanese, and Peruvian, you know, like native things and also things from Europe. But I was also going to say Trinidad, uh, the roti doubles, where it's a roti with like China masala and some other things mixed in yeah. there too. Like it's, it's a mixture of Caribbean, European, and Indian, boom, 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 roti double. Yeah. Anyways, guys, uh, that's the list. Obviously, you know, when you get us talking about food that we've had, man, I've eaten most of the food on the top 50. In fact, top 100, I think we've had a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think Thailand, by the way, ranked really high, even though it's not a big country like Brazil, Andrew, because Thai food really appeals to Eastern Asians, Southeast Asians, as well as Indian people. And there's very few cuisines. For example, like, I don't think Indian people would eat raw fish. As much, yeah. Like, like I'm saying, Thai food was really like that that middle of the Venn diagram, circle, circle, circle. Yeah. Anyway, guys, right. let us know what you guys think about this list in the comment section below. What shouldn't have been on there? What should be on there? What are the motivating factors? Is this just what Brazil eats? Let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.